Aloha, and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. I'm your co-host, Matt Johnson. Uh, we are here every Thursday afternoon, starting at 4 o'clock, and we are talking to Hawaii's farmers, restaurants, foodies, politicians, anyone involved in improving Hawaii's local food system. Uh, today, my co-host, unfortunately, Justine is unable to make it with us today, uh, so we have Telson, who's joining us here today instead. Telson, thanks so much for joining me. Yes, a lot. And we're going to be talking to Ignacio Fleischhauer, uh, who's actually been on the show before, but has so many cool, interesting things going on that we had to invite him back again. Um, so the newest venture that Iggy has been working on is one of the hottest new restaurants to come into Kaka'ako, which is called Makana Deli and Market. So Iggy, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's uh, Makana Market and Deli. Oh, I was like, just, I was trying I was to waiting. figure out which way it is. I was <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I didn't disappoint. But thanks for having me on the show. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I uh, can't wait to talk about this food that you have here. But um, before we dig into the food, literally, hopefully, um, talk a little bit about your new restaurant. Sure. As the name says, Makana Market in Delhi, but it's also <laughs> a restaurant. Think, you had to think about it, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's also right. people always ask me is it so is it a market or is it a deli and I'm like it, it's a boat so is it a restaurant yes that too but really it's a place to talk about food our food system and uh, sourcing and the farmers like, I kind of created it and I use the food that's local uh, doing a model that I'm hoping to try to stay close to which is 90 80 Ninety percent from the islands mm -hmm. and eighty percent from this island, mm -hmm. or wherever we go. Hopefully, we'll end up all over the place, and yeah. um, we'll be able to expand and then source as close to the backyard as possible, which is supposed to be the healthiest and best for you. So that's kind of the theory. And name the Makana mostly to talk about the gift that is Hawaii. It's it's a blessing and a gift to be in Hawaii and to have such an abundance of ecosystem that's always also in danger and growing and that's why people want to live here but um yeah so the places talk about those gifts uh from the ocean the mountains and our farmers and the mm -hmm. hard work and create and design the place almost like a man cave um, <laughs> a lot of wood and it does monkey kind of look like a man cave and, yeah um you got everything your guitar in there yeah everything is like chill and uh Basically, the way it was when we go on the farm or ranch and everybody's eating together and talking about food. And that's why I wanted the place to be as comfortable. Like you're sitting with friends and family, and if you don't know the person next to you, talk to them. And yeah. it's been happening. Like people start talking about food and food um, resources, where it's coming from, and um, basically all the ecosystem and what's happening when we farm and do industrial farming and when we do. Uh, mass production of cattle or or a harvesting of animals and um, so those important issues that are important to me and hopefully we become more and more aware of what's going on around the islands. Cool. Uh, so talk a little bit about the, the so we have the food here that looks delicious. Kind of when someone comes into uh, Makana Deli for the first time, what's on the menu and what can they expect? A lot of venison. <laughs> he had me on the show for venison yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're so, trying to expand that market, so that's kind of part of the reason why I'm doing it, and mm -hmm. also to produce my jerky. And um, so we talk about, and there we talk a lot about venison because people have questions or people are afraid of it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of why the place is also there is to, like, well, don't be afraid of game meat. There's, it's good for you, and it's not gamey, and it doesn't taste bad. and yeah. Um, you can buy it here, and then I'll show you how to cook it and use it as well. And um, what we have here is a Apache stew, which is I'm part Apache, and when we go hunting or camping, there'd always be a pot with this kind of stuff in there, and it's a uh, chile verde, tomatillos, a uh, hominy, the big corn, cactus, and then some kind of like game meat. And mm. just what happened? We have venison. Yeah. Um, back in the day, sometimes it'd be bear, it'd be elk, or whatever we, was caught, and go yeah. in the pot and just be going all week long, and it's better the third day. So um, that's the number one seller in the restaurant. It's yeah, this spicy. Is, this is my favorite. I've actually haven't been able to order 
anything else on yeah, the menu because I, I always you're, you're like a this. crackhead you're always calling for that <laughs> <laughs> you got that stew <laughs> <laughs> well that's a great way to think about me okay <laughs> He's like, I can always count on Matt for a dollar with that stew yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I got, can I get 50 cents for the hockey stew <laughs> um, so and then the bolognese we have the bolognese which is a, a 300 year old family recipe from sicily and bolognese is like meat sauce is heavy meat mm -hmm. um put a lot of different spices and veggies in there to make the sauce but a lot of meat which is a, a quarter uh, pork spicy pork mm -hmm. and made like italian sausage and then we also add venison three quarter venison and leftover wine. <laughs> so, you know, people come in on the weekend, um, it's BYOB and okay. bring some for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. whatever's left over, we throw it in the pot to make the sauce. Okay. Yeah. And everything's paired with local greens, which we're getting from Oahu Fresh. You know right, that guy? Nice. You know that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met that guy a couple times. <laughs> um, and so we have the greens, which are coming from Kahumana Farms, mm -hmm. Ma'o Farms, and then also uh, source from. Um, uh, Mohala Farms, I don't know, okay. and uh, so just work with a lot of the small farms and stuff like that. And uh, I'm also do some of the spices that I grow myself, and mm -hmm. um, some of the fruits and veggies. And we got mango dressing today, and we pickle. We pickled the radishes. You said you love that stuff. Oh, yeah, so we've yeah, been yeah. pickling all that stuff, and then um, so everything we do in there is about use reuse and um so nothing gets wasted you know we make we smoke like prime rib to make chili with the venice ground venison and then by wednesday it becomes a chili mac and cheese which goes back in the smoker all morning with a bunch of different cheeses and um our dressings either um from fruits from yesterday um and if it's not in the dressing then it goes into our flavored water that's available for free to uh, yeah. uh, customers so yeah <laughs> cool wow awesome you're like a superstar man that's great like you, it's unbelievable you're doing all that you're really making that full full circle with the food transparency you know um you, you had mentioned earlier about it being a restaurant but also a deli so could you explain a little bit about that is there a lot of like little like value-added products you've created you talked about the jerky what are the things that you, you might have so that's the next part <laughs> it's been a challenge to try to get the deli part up and going um we you know new restaurant was saving money we bought a deli case and it broke down and then we were okay we gotta buy another one should we go big or just go use and so we ended up meeting in the middle and got a brand new one but smaller one and we'll be making value-added products such as um the sausages and and uh helping people you know it's it's expensive to come in and buy I want a $16 steak, right? right, right. Um, but I don't know how to cook it. So mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is be in the middle and say, okay, well, we'll help you. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll put some olive oil, we'll spice it up, and just take it home and put it on the grill three minutes each side, and that's it. Eat it. Yeah. Um, so we'll have, like, uh, sausage, burger, steaks, and then we'll also have beef. We have some duck. We're working on uh, local rabbit. Um, again, it's just mostly with these local sources and then s the stuff that I can get, like I get this duck prosciutto coming out of New York and Oklahoma, and but it's such a fine delicacy that we have to have it in the shop. And, oh, um, wow. and then we make our own uh, prosciutto and um, different, different things that we're playing. I'm always playing with food and recipes, and I always encourage people, like, just play with the food, do your own thing get creative, here's some guidelines, but just be free with it and try different things and try it and see what it tastes like. That's, that's basically the model that I follow. If it tastes good, I'll eat it, see? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you've been a real like mad scientist in there and, and you've got this space and you've got kind of like a lot of the foundation where you can just try different things. And um, I really like too what you said, how it has that real kind of homey, almost man cave feel when you walk in and it's true like you have more like the, the long table style where chances are you are going to be sitting next to people that maybe you don't know so you might have to interact with them but it does kind of naturally happen in there and, and you have this great food for people to start talking about and um, I mean it's a relatively small space but I think you guys are doing a lot in there and it's, it's yeah, a lot really of fun are. I know you're probably already thinking about trying to expand we're trying to expand. We're trying to 
see if the space next door opens up and uh, <laughs> we want to get a um, hopefully they're not watching they're like, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> don't pay attention <laughs> um, we want to do a bar uh, and have our own liquor license in there and, mm -hmm. and so that's part of expansion and plans and uh, eventually get bigger mass production with some of the things we're doing everyone's begging for the hot sauce oh, and okay. and people are always like can I get some to take and it's a, and we actually smoke um, habanero and Hawaiian chili pepper and carrots for six hours, and then we blend it, and then we make our own hot sauce, and people are just screaming for it. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. nope, 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 not yet, not yet. Wait two months, because now I got I ordered these barrels, and now I line them with wine, and mm -hmm. then dry them out, and now finally we got our hot sauce in there. So the value-added products are finally kicking in and yeah. hopefully by the end of the month we'll have them ready for uh, customers and uh, some of the other things is a uh, coffee that's roasted at high altitude at uh, 13,000 feet which is expensive to do but the quality is there and the, that lack of oxygen does something to the coffee that tastes okay. sweet and you don't need to add um, you know milk or sugar instead and I, I throw my own little stuff in there you know okay. whole cinnamon nutmeg in there and so it kind of caramelizes all these flavors as you roast it. And then, oh, and then interesting. It back. Um, so yeah, a little bit of mad science and, and basically, again, just playing with the food and getting those things done. Our, the barrel aging of the hot sauce is, people are so stoked on it. They yeah. like, can't wait. And the model with that is you buy a bottle, you know, the big bottle will be eight and the small one will be five. And then you bring it back and refill for four and seven. Cool. Yeah. That sounds great. Um, so yeah, we're definitely going to kind of talk more about some of your food products, and also I want to um, talk more about some of the other projects you've been working on. This isn't just the first time you've come together and put together really good food. So we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll get back to it. Awesome. Tim Appachaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Appachaw. Thank you. We'll talk about that. Bye -bye. And we're back to White Food and Farmer Series. I'm your co-host, Matt Johnson. Uh, instead of Justine, we have Telson joining us as our co-host today. And we are talking to Iggy Fleischhauer. <laughs> did, I, did I get it right? Close enough. Cl uh, I've been called worse. I'm just going to have to keep... I've heard <laughs> Fleischhauer, Fleischhauer, all kinds of stuff. I think that's what I said that's in the last Fleischhauer, the which is a Fleisch. flesh cutter, so that butchering thing has been in the lineage for a while. Flesh cutter, that just <laughs> sounds scary. <laughs> Don't mess with this guy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're catching up with you, talking about your new venture, Makana Market. Market and Delhi. Uh, so we're kind of talking about the, the Delhi part of it. It's kind of like the next... Um, part of the the project uh, let's talk a little bit about some of your past projects because this is kind of a i would say a culmination of a lot of different things you've been doing as part of your culinary career but um really doing a lot of different things around local food getting people to eat better uh supporting local farmers um you were working closely with roots cafe which mm -hmm. is another uh, uh, foundational type restaurant in Kalihi. Um, yeah, talk a little bit about that. Sure. Um, let's see, where do we go with that? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've been anywhere really you involved. It's funny the whole culinary career because I've always avoided it. Uh -huh. Just like art, like I've I've done art and I love art and I love cooking and food, but I always avoided trying to get into the business of it because mm -hmm. I just thought I would hate it and. Um, 
So I'm still trying to get out of it, though I keep <laughs> going doing, into it. And I love it. Job. I have a passion yeah. for it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I started in the catering thing doing an app about sacred places and tours. And, and so somehow that ended up becoming like, hey, your food was great on that little tour. Okay. Would you, uh, would you mind doing catering? I was like, nah. And I said, well, we'll pay you, you know, 40, 50, 60 bucks a head. And it depends on, and I was like, well, our app's not making money, so <laughs> let's get this done. And, um, and that's how I hooked up with different folks and, and working with Roots and Kokoa uh, Kalihi Valley, Huluaina, um, did different things with them and, you know, did volunteer work and then um, was in their kitchen for about three years. And then also work with the kids and uh, teaching them cooking and uh, life skills. And then also hunting and using hunting and survival more as a metaphor for knowing that the abundance is already within you and all around you without mm -hmm. having a need for something else. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's really what I'm trying to get to, that there's so much here that we don't need to go bring it from somewhere else. Mm. right? And I've always thought, like, why aren't we focusing on more local cultural foods and um so I, this is a call out anyone growing hawaiian chili pepper i need oh. all the one that you have i'll take oh. it so grow it um we get a lot of uh different places looking for hawaiian chili peppers i mean it's it's like one of those things everybody has a plant in it, it's tree. funny because it grows easy yeah. well unless it's too hot and then it also you don't need a lot of space you can get a lot of chili yeah, yeah, yeah. um so those kind of, you know, um, to me, I'd see, it seems like an issue like, oh, we're going to try to grow coffee, or we're going to go and grow sugar cane, and we're going to import it from somewhere instead of like, hey, let's make with what we've got, which is good for our environment and an yeah. ecosystem, and it's balanced, and let's work with UH and the, the you know, our, our elders and work with the new system and say, mm -hmm. that, all right, there's medicine here, and our food should be looked at as medicine. And we can also sell as bottled medicine if we needed to. And yeah. let's make olena, let's do this, and, and mm -hmm. the teas. And instead of like, oh, let's rip off the land and uh, just tear it apart and do something different that may not work in 10 years. And, and then we'll just sell it as real estate. Sorry, you go in a little. <laughs> no, that's, that's what we're here for. <laughs> um, but that's, that's something I've always thought about. Why aren't we doing that? And, and so I think the more that restaurants, um, ask for those products and the locals ask for those products the better it is for a farmer farmers work so hard and i you know i've gone out and farmed and i garden and it's not easy it's not fun there is a joy in seeing your finished product mm -hmm. when, it, when you harvest yeah. but man that's a hard job and mm -hmm. so really that's part of why i'm also doing what i'm doing is to help promote those guys they're not out trying to market like what we we're talking about earlier right. they're not out there going yeah you look at my carrots and you know i'm the man <laughs> i grew these perfect carrots and um so that's what i'm hoping to showcase is what they're doing and and their labor and their hard work and say okay let's support them let's keep it going let's if there's been a movement but let's grow that movement and get it bigger and bigger and uh, market all the little guys. There's a lot of guys getting money already, grants and this. There's a lot of other guys that are tiny, tiny, trying to sprout and grow bigger, and that's yeah. kind of where I want to do more of and work with those kind of guys and help them get their product to the market mm -hmm. and on a national level or international level. Today we had um, uh, Hawaii Express or Aloha Express magazine, it's a Japanese magazine. They came in like, oh, we want to do a piece on you, and they just loved everything. We yeah. talked story and a bunch of pictures, and again, we focus on where's the food coming from. It's not about me. Yeah, the food is good, and that's great, and I'm glad, and we put our aloha into it and all of our love, our staff. We try to get them to express that love when they're in that kitchen, and yeah. but really is to pay respect and honor the source of the food and mm -hmm. the laborers and the land, and it's yeah. just, that's really what it's about. Right. Awesome. That's great. So it seems like the, the restaurant's really rooted in community, culture, and education. Um, a little earlier, you showed us a clip, and you're, you're mentioning about people can order an Olelo Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, and you also talked about some classes. Could you talk about like these community educational projects that you're doing and cultural projects? Sure. So I've been involved in the community a long time, and um, 
with cultural practices and never really went all in to learn about uh, language. And but now we're starting to get there, and uh, our um, our front of the house uh, can you can order from them in Hawaiian, and so he's starting to teach us a word here, a word there every morning, like. Let's learn something in Hawaiian so that we're all learning in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm taking hula and learning in the old, old way about place and myth and legend. But really, those myths and legends are based on something that really was happening, either scientifically or um, things that were seen. And so they were expressed in this way. And then how that derived into our language and the counting system and everything else. So, uh, it's interesting learning that, and then we want to pass it on. So we're planning on uh, getting uh, folks into the space when we're not open during the week from uh, Monday to Thursday, but we're planning on changing that. But uh, we'll be offering classes on Wednesdays, Mondays, Tuesdays, and using the space to do uh, more culturally, culturally relevant um, learning, mm. including how to use the foods. Uh, I'll be doing butchering classes, cooking classes, um, and then I'm starting, I've started the paperwork to do a nonprofit where we take uh, foster and homeless kids to the farm in Manoa, um, where we're recovering 300 acres to plant more food. Mm. And then they'll learn about the system, where it comes from, not just eating it. And they get to come and have a dinner as a family because they, they don't have family. So mm -hmm. our goal is to get them together to eat and uh, sit at the table together and have that experience at least once a month and then um so yeah i mean that's really what we're all about is really that i feel like i've been blessed so much with what's coming from hawaii and everyone's aloha when i moved here mm -hmm. you know i came here in high school and though my family's from Kauai originally mm -hmm. uh it was a homecoming and ever since then hawaii's always been home and so mm -hmm. uh, we want to share what was shared with us with everyone else so, so. um so one of the things like the you know, the actual location where you are, it's basically like Cook Street and Kawahau, yeah? Yeah, Kawahau. So it's kind of like a, a unassuming location. You kind of walk by there. <laughs> it's, it's, I call it kind of like the old Kakako. It's not the area that's really You can say it's, it's yeah. bus up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, so how are people finding you? And, and who who is, like, I know I've been in there before, and there's some... Um, Offices kind of right across the street, yeah. seeing them kind of trickling in. How you know? How are people been finding you? And and what? And you mentioned before too, like you're introducing, um, you know, venison to people that you know, kind of debunking some myths they may have about it. How yeah? You know, how are people finding you? And what's what's that process been like? It's been awesome. People love it. Um, we do like these hunter boards at night and you bring your own wine and mm -hmm. uh, the hunter's board is, you know, everything's served on uh, these big wooden platters or uh, chopping boards and um, we have venison, uh, duck, fish. We like the other day, it's what comes to the door from our fishermen. So we have like, you know, a kule that came in and so we like did some uh, a kule fried in coconut oil yeah. with a bunch of spices, stuff like that. and. Um, it just gets all in the platter and we put it out there and they just it's family style so people yeah. come and um, so they love it they've been learning that wow it, it really doesn't taste gamey it actually tastes sweet and it's the way that it's harvested mm -hmm. it's uh, hopefully it's the love we're putting in there as well and <laughs> um, but yeah the response has been wonderful and it's been growing and uh, we're really stoked to be able to do that and the, the community really loves it because it's healthy you know there's other food around there that's not but you know when i first got into a, a lunch wagon the the worst thing that i heard was oh that looks too healthy bro <laughs> <laughs> and, and now but now where we're at people are like oh that's good we're glad there's something healthy yeah, here yeah, and yeah. Uh, so we, and we have veggie options we have you know it's not just meat and it's not just <laughs> venison we have a uh, really good uh high quality beef uh we're sourcing from Konoa beef and mm -hmm. then also from Wailua meat company on Kauai mm -hmm. and some from Molokai um then we get lamb from uh Kauai as well sometimes from Molokai um what else we got uh we we do different dinners so we go out and we do uh fundraisers for nonprofits and stuff like that and we plan different dinners we just did a 4th of July dinner under the under the fireworks so we oh, went out on a yeah. big sailboat and cool. we did a dinner and raised funds for a 
Captain's Club, which is a program for uh, foster kids. We teach them sailing and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. So those kind of things are going on, and, and uh, the community loves it. Like, uh, you know, uh, Imoa Kamehameha, all the guys coming over from Kauai <laughs> Hau, the offices they've been eating in there and bringing, you know, lots of guests. And, you know, it's kind of been like a little underground. Mm. Some some gentleman came in a couple of weeks ago from uh, Washington, and he's a lobbyist, and mm. he said, oh, yeah, well, the governor said I should be here. And I was like, the governor knows about <laughs> it? So like, that's sweet. And then, uh, you know, people like that, the attorney general, and, yeah. and they, the... They've sent people over and stuff like that. Like Stokes, so it's people are talking about it and yeah, it's great. And yeah. you know, Yelp's been awesome for mm -hmm. us. Uh, a few little hits and misses, and uh. but uh, <laughs> um, we had someone complain about our hours. And it, it's hard a new business, you know, to be open all the time and not have enough guests, and which is kind of hard in that area because yeah. it's most of our traffic's dependent on the local businesses and mm -hmm. the people working around there. And so after two, it's kind of ghost it town. Down. Yeah. yeah. And, but we're hoping that will change in the next month. We're going to be on uh, Made in Hawaii TV. Mm. We'll be piped into the hotel rooms. And we'll be on Living 808. Um, awesome. Yeah, so Living 808. And <laughs> magazines and stuff. So Cool. Well, it's very exciting. Iggy, thank you so much for being on the show. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Um, but we'll definitely bring you back on the show again and Sweet. catch up with you. Telson, thank you so much yeah, for mm -hmm. co-hosting. We'll definitely have you on the show again. I want to hear more about uh, some of the projects you're working on as well. So thank you once again, Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. We'll see you next Thursday at 4 p.m. Aloha.